Hey, scholars, it's good to be back with you. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how to handle point moments when you're doing statics problems. Well, let's get out of the way first. What exactly is a point moment? Well, the way we draw it on our free body diagrams is real simple. There'll be a dot and then this curved arrow going around it. All right? And there'll be a number that says this is the, the moment or the torque applied at that point. So you might see something like 1,000 Newton meters. All right. I mean, mathematically, I guess I know what that is. What is that mechanically? How do you make a point moment? Well, mechanically, it's pretty hard to do. I think you can probably do it electromagnetically. But mechanically, let's go back to the definition of a moment. A moment is a force acting at a perpendicular distance. So let's get this out of the way here. How, how would I make 1,000 Newton meters? Well, if I had a uh, little arm going up there and I was making a force, I have a force and a distance. Okay, there's a moment. But the problem is there's also a net force that way. That isn't just a moment. That's a force and a moment. Well, what if I did this? I put another little arm coming down here, same distance and the same force, but now go in the other direction. Now, the sum of those two forces will make this F as well. Maybe that's a thousand uh, newtons and maybe that's half a meter or something. So the, uh, the net moment on this would be a thousand newton meters. So now the sum of the forces is zero. I've got, let's, let's put some numbers on here just to make the point. And if each one of those is 0 0.5 meters, you've now got a thousand newton meter moment about this point right here. Okay, we'll call that P because I have no imagination. So there you go. There's a thousand newton meter moment made with two forces acting at a perpendicular distance. Mechanically, this is how it usually works. If you look at an electric motor, if you look inside of it, there's an armature spinning around and then there's, there's uh, uh, magnets and things around it. Well, those are forces acting at a distance. If you look inside an engine, uh, there's a crankshaft in there. Well, and you have at least one, there's a crankshaft. And pistons, one or more pistons. And they're pushing at these, these what are called uh, throws, these eccentric points on the crankshaft. And they look kind of like this. So, you know, what's going on inside an engine? Is it a point moment? Absolutely not. It's forces acting at a distance. But when you look at the engine as a whole, yeah, it's pretty much making a point moment. When you look at an electric motor as a whole, it's pretty much making a point moment. So, and point moment is an idealization of something that's a little more intuitive here. So, how do you handle this mathematically, I guess? Let's draw a problem first. There. That looks like something a kind of homework problem a nerd like me would give you. Okay, let's, let's do this one. Let's say we're given all this and our ob objective is to find the reaction forces at A and B. Well, how do we do this? I don't know. How do we do any statics problem? Remember the four steps? One, working diagram. That's this. Number two, free body diagram. Number three, write out equations of static equilibrium. And number four, solve for something. Number five, enjoy celebratory baked goods. This, of course, is optional. So there's the working diagram. There's step one. Step two is draw a free body diagram. Well, I don't have a whole lot of blackboard space here. Uh, can I just modify this and make this the free body diagram? What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my structure free from its supports to make it a free body. And I'm going to replace those supports with the forces that they impose on the structure. Those are the reaction forces. So get all the numbers here and get rid of those. OK, does that look better? That's now a free body diagram. I've gotten rid of all the stuff I don't need here. We'll need some of those, those distances here in a minute and uh, replace the, the boundaries, those the pin boundaries, with some forces, the reaction forces. 
Now there's a horizontal reaction force here because this force, there, that uh, boundary, had a pin that could uh, generate forces in both the x and the y direction. And this one was just a roller pin, so it can only make forces vertical. So I've got three things I don't know, three things I'm trying to find. Well, let's do this. And I also have a, 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 a positive sign convention there, so I know which way is positive. So let's see. If I need to sum the forces in the horizontal direction, which is the x direction, well, let's see. That's got to be 0. And let's see. Ax plus 1,000 newtons, which is right there, minus 1,000 newtons, and that's 0. Well, those two cancel out. So I'm going to get AX equals zero. Well, you could kind of take a look and tell that was coming, so that's good. Let's see, can I go down here? I can. Okay, so let's let's look at the forces in the y direction, also equal to zero. Okay, remember statics, the sum of the forces has to be zero. If the sum of the forces is not zero, it's not static anymore. That means it's accelerating, that's dynamics, different class. So let's see, AY is vertical. Boy, that looks terrible. I can do better. Ah, oh, that's way more gooder. Okay, plus by, and that has to equal zero. So I can, you know, not too much algebra shows me that ay has to be the negative of by. So that's gonna, we're gonna need that here in a minute. Dang, this is easy, isn't it? Now, there's two ways I can handle this. I can. Uh, go ahead and, and solve it directly as it is, or I can replace this with a point moment. Well, a thousand newtons times half a meter is 500 newton meters. A thousand newtons times five, uh, half a meter is another 500 newton meters. I can replace this with a point moment right in the middle. They're mathematically equivalent, at least in the, in the larger sense, they're physically equivalent. Now right here, yeah, the beam's gonna know the difference, but at the reaction uh, points, it's not. So let me do this. I'm going to make a slight modification here. I'm going to actually draw this a little bit differently. Those little extensions I don't need anymore. Okay, now the, the, the technical name for this, the, those forces acting at a distance in opposite directions, that's called a couple. A couple has a, an equivalent moment. And uh, whenever statics teachers try to be funny, they always tell you that every couple has its moment. Um, you can interpret that however you want. So this is it. This is a point moment. I've replaced those two little extensions out there with the opposing forces with that. Mathematically, they're equivalent. And I'm going to get the exact same reaction forces as I would have before. So let's do this. Let's sum the moments now. Now, I need to sum the moments about some point. Well, I don't know. Let's pick A. If I sum the moments about point A, the perpendicular distance of A at Y and AX about that point is zero. Now, remember, physics doesn't know or care anything about your coordinate system. It just works. The coordinate system is a human thing. It's something we invented to help with the bookkeeping. So you can, you can do this with uh, summing the moments about any point you want. I could sum them up here if I wanted to. Now, it's not very convenient, but mathematically it's fine. Physics doesn't care. So let's, let's sum about point A just because it's convenient. Well, let's just look from left to right and start summing moments. Well, what's the, the distance, perpendicular distance, between AY and point A? Well, it's going to be zero. The perpendicular distance from AX to point A, also zero. Okay, this is getting easy. Right there. Now, I know that's three meters out. I, that was given as part of the problem. How do I handle this? Well, point moments don't have a distance. They're just a moment. Remember, it's already got the units of moment. If I tried to multiply it by a distance again, I'd get Newton meters squared. I don't know what that is, but that's not a moment. So the nice part about this is uh, I just get to add 1,000 Newton meters here. Right? And this is in the positive direction. This is counterclockwise. And my positive sign convention there says that counterclockwise is positive. So that's good. And let's see, what else do I have? Distance there of five meters. By is up, so it's going to try to rotate counterclockwise around A, also positive. And let's see, I'm running out of room here. Let's, let's move this over. OK. 
Okay. Trying to get in the way of my little signs here. So there we go. That's, geez, I don't know. Uh, one equation, one unknown, linear, shouldn't be too hard. If I uh, solve that, I'll get uh, by is minus 1,000 newton meters over 5 meters. Well, let's see, newton meters divided by meters better give me newtons. That's a force, good. By is 200 newtons. All right. Ax is 0, Ay is negative By. Oops, that's going to be minus. Got to make sure I keep that minus sign up there. And what that minus sign means is I assumed the wrong direction for by. Is this wrong? No, it's fine. I didn't know what direction by was. Whenever I draw these arrows up here, usually I just assume the positive direction and go. Well, they couldn't both be. You know, Ay and by both can't be the same direction or this isn't going to work. Not too surprising that comes out negative. Not a problem. This is just the math saying, well, you assumed the, the wrong direction. I'll take care of it. A-Y is negative B-Y. Let's see if I can do this. So there you go. Now, what if this point existed somewhere else? Instead of three meters over like I initially drew it, what if it was right there or right there or right there? doesn't matter. A-Y and B-Y are going to be the same because this just gets added into the equation. The distance from A to there, remember, it doesn't show up here anywhere, so it doesn't matter what it is. So there you go. There's how to handle a point moment when you're solving statics problems. Hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.